Sorry for the delay. Um, first of all, I think uh, I, I can't, um, we should be starting 10.30 every day so that people have time after breakfast. And uh, yeah, so, but it's 10.40 now, but inshallah today it's probably gonna be shorter. I realize these sessions can be quite long. So I'm gonna, inshallah, keep it short today. Um, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم جمع مبارك everyone um, I don't know if you noticed what the Imam recited today for Fajr which surah he recited he recited Surah Al-Insan. Uh, and the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to recite in Salat Al-Fajr, Surah Al-Insan, uh, in the second rakah actually, in the first rakah, Surah Al-Sajda. So these two surahs are, it was the habit of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to always recite them, or usually recite them for Jum'ah, Fajr of Jum'ah. So, some of the people, the ulama and the men of Allah who wanted, wanted to know what is the wisdom behind that. Why? Everything that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa does is for a wisdom. So one of the people who answered this question, and after, I, I believe the great ulama who came later all followed him in that and accepted that from him, is the Imam al-Hakim al-Tirmidhi who I mentioned earlier, the great early Sufi and muhaddith. In a book about the um, reasons, the, the secrets, the ilal, the, the reasons behind the sharia. And he said, the, these two surahs were chosen because of a, a, a verse or a number of verses in each of them that have the same theme, tied to the day of Jum'ah. So, Jum'ah is the day in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Friday is the best of the days. It's the best day of the week, it's the best day in general. Why? Because it is the day in which Adam was created, meaning humanity. It is the day when we, as human beings, were created. And therefore, it became a day of Eid for the Muslims. It is the day that we congregate together for our Friday prayer. And then we celebrate together by being with family, with loved ones. And that is why on Friday, we don't, it's recommended, it's disliked for us to fast. Why? Because it's similar to what you call the official Eids of Islam. The Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr, it is haram to fast. In Jum'ah, which is a lesser type of Eid, it is disliked to fast. Why? Because it's a day of celebration. Celebrating what? Celebrating the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal creating us. So Jum'ah mirrors Eid in many ways. There are speci special salah that's different than the other days, which includes a khutbah and uh, the speech and two rak'ahs, except uh, the ordering is different. At one point, the ordering was the same, and then it was changed. Um, so for for Jum'ah, it flipped, so now it is the khutbah first and then the salah. So, so Friday, in many ways, is like uh, Eid. And it was described as a Eid by Rasulullah Sallallahu and his Sahaba. So when in Medina, there were many people living in little villages outside the main city. So uh, satellite little villages around the main city. So they would pray their daily prayers in their own masjids because it was not to be expected of them for every single salah to come and join the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for, uh, for the jama'ah in Medina. That would be too, too difficult. But what they would do is they would always come down for Jum'ah. They would always pray Jum'ah with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his masjid in Medina. But on the days of Eid, when they have already come down for Salatul Eid and prayed 
uh, that congregational prayer, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allowed them not to come back again for Jum'ah because it is the, almost the same thing. They have done the same thing for Eid. Um, so he said, those who come from far away from other, outside the city, we have already done our, uh, uh, you know, one salah of, of the same sort, so you, you don't have to come back. And so that's why Sayyidina Uthman, uh, in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sayyidina Uthman, when he became Khalifa, he said to those people, uh, on a day when Eid was Jum'ah, he said, today we Muslims have two Eids, have come on the same day, so we have already done the Salah in the morning of Eid, you don't have to come back again for Jum'ah, and so you can stay in your villages and just pray Dhuhr normally. So a lot of people, they think in Islam, we only have two Eids, and that's it, you're not allowed to celebrate anything else. That's a misunderstanding. People are confusing the Sharia sense of Eid and the linguistic sense of Eid. So, Sharia Eid is a type of day, we have it twice a year, where you have a special salah with its own khutbah, with its own uh, two rak'ah. There's certain sunan, for example, it's recommended you walk to the masjid from one road and you come back from another. Um, on Eid al-Fitr, you eat something sweet before you go. Eid al-Adha, you wait until salah and then you eat. So you dress nicely, etc. So there's a, and you're not allowed to fast. So there's, that is an official Eid in the Sharia sense. Friday is also a kind of, it's in between, because it is almost like Eid uh, in the official sense, but it's not. So you're allowed to fast, but it's disliked. And if you want to, you add a day before or after it. And, but the whole reason is you're supposed to enjoy the day like Eid. It's a day of celebrating and thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for having created mankind. It's a day of celebration. So if people want to celebrate something on a, on a regular basis to thank Allah, there is no problem with that. So, you know, and people say, oh, you can't celebrate somebody's birthday because it is an Eid. So people confuse because the Arabic word, they just look at the outer Arabic word, not knowing that the word has could have a Sharia meaning or could have a linguistic meaning. So before Islam, wudu used to mean to wash your hands. And there is one hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ used that in the linguistic meaning. He said, um, do wudu before you eat. It doesn't, we don't all go and do our wudu before we eat because we know that he ﷺ was talking about the linguistic meaning of wudu, not the Sharia meaning of wudu. Likewise, he ﷺ said, go to visit the, the dead, your dead, go and visit your dead, وَصَلُّوا عَلَيْهِمْ Here he وسلم, is using the word salah in its meaning in the language of dua. Make dua for them. It doesn't mean go and like repeat salah janazah over them or something. Uh, so people have to know when the Prophet وسلم, is talking, is he talking about using the word in its sharia sense or in its linguistic sense. So we are allowed to have different types of Eids as long as we you don't say, okay, it's my son's birthday today, so no one's allowed to fast, we're gonna go to the masjid, we're gonna do a khutbah. So <laughs> if, you, if, if you do that, then you've added the Eid to Islam. But if you're just celebrating, commemorating something to thank Allah, then that is not the Sharia Eid, and that is allowed. There's nothing against that in Islam. So in fact, Islam is a religion of celebration. It's, and that is, um, it's a religion of celebration. It is a religion of thankfulness to Allah. And that is what we see here expressed in Salat al-Jum'ah, the day in which we as humankind were created. So what did Rasulullah Sallallahu do every Fajr of Jum'ah? He would recite Surah As-Sajda first. Why? Sorry, I'm really thirsty today. Uh, because of these verses. When it's talking about Allah Azza wa Jal, الذي أحسن كل شيء خلقه وبدأ خلق الإنسان من طين ثم جعل نسله من سلالة من ماء مهين ثم سواه ونفخ فيه من روحه وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة قليلا ما تشكرون. He is the one who perfected everything he created. He made it beautiful. 
and he began the creation of mankind from mud, meaning Adam alayhi salam. Then he made his descendants from this extract of fluid. Then it goes back to Adam alayhi salam. Then he fashioned him and blew into him of his spirit. And he made for you, mankind, hearing and sight and hearts, but little do you thank Allah. So Friday is the day in which we were created, and I believe in the hadith also it says Friday is the day in which the soul was blown into Adam alayhi salam. So these verses are there to remind us on Friday morning to remember Allah's blessing upon us so that we can be grateful because Allah is saying, little are you thankful for these blessings. So Rasulullah is reciting these verses on Fajr so that you, that day you remember, today is a day I'm going to thank Allah for his blessings. I'm going to celebrate his blessings. And I come with my family and we're going to eat, we're going to dress nice, we're going to have a good time, and we're going to be aware of Allah's blessings upon us and use our blessings of hearing, of sight, of our hearts and intellects to remember Allah and use them to be grateful to Allah and to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And in the second rak'ah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would recite, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءًا مَذْكُورًا إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا it's saying we created mankind from this mixed um, liquid in order to test him and then we gave him hearing and we gave him sight and then we guided him the path and he will be either grateful, shakura, or kafura, ungrateful. So you notice here kufur is the opposite of shukur. In this verse. So Tawheed, in a sense, is to be in a state of gratefulness to Allah. Why? It is to recognize that Allah Azza wa is the creator. It is to recognize that Allah Azza wa is the source of all your blessings. Anytime you attribute any of the blessings of Allah to somebody else, then that is a kufr. Um, and so this happens many times in the, uh, in the Qur'an where shukr is presented as the opposite of kufr. Um, for example, we have another ayah that says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me and I will remember you. Meaning, remember me by doing dhikr of me Remember me by being where I expect you to be and not being where I don't want you to be. Remember me by stopping yourself from doing something that you know I, I, I dislike. Remember me by reciting my book. Remember me by trying to get close to me and I remember you. I shower you with mercy. I give you what you need. I guide you to that which is better. I raise you in rank, I bring you closer to me, etc., etc. وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ And be grateful to me, and do not be ungrateful, takfurun. Again, shukur is the opposite of kufr. So that shows you how in Islam, shukur is, is so important that it is almost Islam. If shukur is the opposite of kufr, and Islam, Tawheed is the opposite of Kufr, then Shukr or Islam are almost the same thing. That's why Imam Al-Ghazali, in his, Ihya, in his chapter on Sabr and Shukr, he says, in reality, it becomes clear that فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ هَذَا فَرْعُ بَابٍ مِنَ التَّوْحِيدِ Know that the Shukr, thankfulness to Allah, is, is really a branch of Tawheed. It is a part of Tawheed. And so, um, 
So today we're going to talk about, about shukr and uh, perhaps something else uh, uh, as well. There is a, in, in the chapter on sitq in our book of intentions, there's a beautiful quote of Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, radiallahu anhuma, where Ibn Abbas says, four things, if you have them, then you are successful. Sidq, truthfulness, or, um, and yeah, truthfulness, wal haya, we all know the meaning of haya, that kind of modesty uh, or shame, and husn al khuluq, beautiful character, and shukr. Beautiful four things that really capture what it is to be a Muslim. So inshallah, I'll talk about two of them today and maybe the rest for another time. Um, so f these four things really capture Islam because the Prophet Sallallahu said, I was only sent to perfect those noble characters, to, to complete those noble characters. Um, and the Prophet Sallallahu said, Haya is the ca characteristic of the Muslim. And shukr, as we see, is the opposite of kufr. And sidq, we will be seeing with Sheikh Abdul Hakim how central it is to, 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 to what is a Muslim. So, so these four things, inshallah, I thought maybe we can go through them and begin with uh, shukr and begin with, and afterwards, sidq. So uh, they also say that uh, those who have studied, you know, in the Quran, it says, follow the milla of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Follow the way of Ibrahim, the religion of Ibrahim. So what is the religion of Ibrahim? So some people who have investigated in the Quran, the verses about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, have said his millah revolves around four things extracted from the Quran. Salah is number one salah, being a righteous person. And that includes tawheed. And all things revolved around tawheed and being a pious person. Second thing is dhikr, being connected to Allah. The religions of the prophets are to connect us back to Allah, to make us believe in him, tawheed, and that is in salah, and to be pious, and to be connected to Allah, to be conscious of Allah. So, so many of the things in, in religion are aimed at that, like salah. Salah is a key to dhikr. Many of the other acts we do are a key to dhikr. So they all revolve around bringing us to a state of dhikr of Allah. And then sabr and shukr. The other two are cornerstones of the Millah of Ibrahim are patience. Patience with the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And with any hardships and accepting um, as well um, accepting the decrees of Allah. And patience also includes having good character where you are patient with those who harm you. Because some people think good character is to be nice to people who are nice to you, but that is easy to do. But true good character is to be nice to those who harm you. So, um, and finally, shukr, to be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. These are the cornerstones of the Millah Ibrahim, and it says, who is better, who is more excellent, who is ahsan than he who follows the way of Ibrahim? And so we should all strive to be those people of Ihsan who are beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, and if you go to the surah of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, you find that in reality the surah of Ibrahim is really beautiful. It's one of my favorite surahs because the whole flavor of the surah, the whole spirit of the surah, the whole... Um, um, spirit of the surah is a spirit of shukr. The whole surah from beginning to end is about shukr. It's about being happy with the blessings of Allah. Thankful for the blessings of Allah. So it says, um, it begins, Alif Lam Ra, kitabun anzalnahu ilayka litukhrija nasa minal dhulumati ila nur bi'idhni rabbihim. Um, a book that we reveal to you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to bring people out from darkness into the light. So first reminding us that Allah, this religion is not to put us in any kind of hardship. This religion is for our sake to bring us out from darkness into light. Then it says in verse 5, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ And we have 
sent Moses like that as well. We sent him forth with our signs. Bring out your people from the darknesses, darknesses to the light. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And remind them of the days of Allah. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ in this, there are signs for everyone who is sabbar, patient, and shakur. So, they say, and Imam Ghazali says in his, he has a chapter in his ihya called On Sabr and Shukr, Patience and Shukr. He says these are the two halves of Iman. One half is sabr, one half is shukr. And we see them here together in this verse. For everyone who is patient and grateful. And how do we see that in the rights of Islam? We see that, for example, in Hajj. We saw the verses um, uh, recited yesterday. We're talking about Hajj. And it says, وَشْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ And thank Allah for what you have, He has guided you to. And so, some of the Mufassirun say that is referring to Salatul uh, to Eid al Adha. Why? Because why do we do Eid of al Adha to celebrate well, Hajj? To celebrate that difficult, incredible experience we have just done. And even if you haven't gone to Hajj, then the 10 days of the Hijjah in which you have been engaged in the dhikr of Allah and worshipping Allah. But really, it was, it's. it's to thank Allah for having completed the Hajj, we celebrate. We thank Allah with the, salah, with the Eid al-Adha. And what's the other Eid of Islam? Eid al-Fitr. And why is Eid al-Fitr there? To thank Allah for the accomplishment of fasting. For that. And what is fasting if not sabr? Fasting is sabr, is to be patient. That's why Imam Ghazali says, the greatest type of sabr, وَأَعْظَمُ sabri. The greatest sabr is what you have to go through in order to stay away, to refrain from your desires. So we have in Islam, we see these pairs together. Fasting and hardship, sabr, and then shukr, Eid al-Fitr. Hardship of al-Adha, of al-Hajj, and then shukr, Eid al-Adha. And what's amazing is that in the sight of Allah, they are equals. You'd think that sabr going through hardship is rewarded more than shukr. But in, that's not really the case. They are equals, and in fact, shukr can be much greater than sabr. For example, some say there's a... a there is a hadith that the greatest uh, day of the year is uh, the day of Arafah. But there is also a hadith that the greatest day of the year is the day of Eid. An Eid al-Adha, I believe. And so we see that Arafah, we can understand, it's a day in which we spend our whole day in dua. And imagine the pilgrims under the sun and the hardship and in a state of tajreed, in the state of ihram, in such simplicity going through so much hardship, being patient. But then Eid al-Adha, this day being the greatest day, when it is a day described by Rasulullah as a day of eating and drinking and dhikr of Allah. So what do you do on the Eid? It's a day of eating and drinking but also dhikr of Allah. Dhikr in many senses. Dhikr of takbir. We do the takbirat together. But also dhikr that we are thanking Allah for these blessings. And our coming together and celebrating is for that purpose. It's not just to meet with our friends. We are celebrating something. So, so you think, okay, I'm getting... This is the, the greatest day or one of the two greatest days of the year and Allah Azza wa is telling me, you're not allowed to fast. Eat. Eat and drink and be happy. And likewise, even we said Jumu'ah is the best day of the week. And yet, because it is a day of Eid, a day of celebration, the Prophet ﷺ said to us, don't fast on Friday. Even though it is the greatest day, you'd expect, okay, this is a great day, fast and get more reward. 
But the Prophet is saying, don't fast on Friday. Thank Allah through other means, and you'll still get as much reward. You are pleasing Allah. You don't have to please Allah through hardship. You can please Allah through happiness with his blessings, through shukr. And that's why, I mean, the, layl, the night before Friday is also, I mean, there is actually a debate between the ulama, if you can believe this, what is greater, the night before every Friday or the night Laylatul Qadr? So those who say the night of Friday is greater, they say Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months except of Fridays, because Friday has its own merit. Um, so Allahu Alam, the answer is probably Laylatul Qadr, but the point is, like the night of Friday is of such importance, but Rasulullah sallallahu told us in specifically in Sahih Muslim, don't do extra qiyam, meaning salah, don't do extra qiyam than your usual on that night in particular. Why rest on that night? Um, and Imam Nawi says, it's really, he says it's, we're confused, we don't know why. Imam Nawi says we don't know why Rasulullah sallallahu is telling us on the greatest night of our lives, other than Laylatul Qadr, not to do extra ibadah, physically, physical worship. Possibly it is to um, rest so that we are ready for Salat al-Jum'ah. We're not tired. Um, and that we are there for that great event of Salat al-Jum'ah. And so that, uh, but also, um, piety is not only through hardship. Piety is not always through, yani, putting yourself in, 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 in hardship, uh, you know. So sometimes you can please Allah as much or more through your state of, of happiness with Allah. There's other things that Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, recommended that we do on the night of Friday. For example, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, increase your salawat upon me in the radiant night and the radiant day, the night of Friday and the day of Friday. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best of your days is Friday, so increase your salawat upon me on Friday. And in a, in a reality, in, if you think about it, that is also salawat is one of the greatest, greatest forms of shukr. Salawat is to recognize every blessing that has come to us from Rasulullah sallallahu Rasulullah sallallahu does not need our salawat, by the way. He... Uh, we are those in need of salawat upon him because he sallallahu sallam, knows his position with his Lord. And he sallallahu sallam, knows how much Allah Azza wa Jal loves him. And he wants good for us. So he's telling us to increase our salawat upon him because he knows how much Allah loves those who love his beloved and honors those who love his beloved. And as we know from the hadith that if you make dua for your brother without him knowing, the angels will say, and for you there is just as much, or in some narrations, double what you have asked for your brother. So Rasulullah wants us to make dua for him and send salawat upon him so that we get the reward. And that's why he وسلم, said, as in Sahih Muslim, whoever does one salah upon me, Allah will do ten salawat upon him. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, who does, he who does not thank the people does not thank Allah. So in a sense, one of our attentions in salawat is to be grateful to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine, imagine Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cave of Hira and Sayyidina Jibreel comes to him and he re realizes that he is a prophet of Allah. And then he is covered up in his, yani in, what, in what he's covered up in, and then the ayah comes, Ya ayyuha al-mudzammil, qum fa'andir. Or Ya ayyuha al-muddathir, qum fa'andir. He is covered up in his dithar, in his cover, and he is given that mission. Go and deliver the message. Imagine being told, that you, and right, you are the only believer, him and his wife at the moment, are messenger to all mankind. And you have this burden, this mission, to all of mankind. Imagine how he must have felt, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How am I to guide every you know, human being on this earth? 
And imagine every hardship that he had to go through when his community was weak and small for our sake and everything that he endured for us and all the hardship that he did for us. And even after he succeeded and he had this great um, ummah and he had his conquests and his openings and he had built this beautiful city, of radiant city of Medina, he was standing up in prayer, crying every night, crying, repeating that verse that says, Oh Allah, if you, that verse in Surah Ma'idah that says something along the lines of, Ya Allah, if you, if you punish them, then, you know, you, they are your servants, you are free to do as you wish, but if you forgive them, then you are the most wise. Something along those lines. He sallam, was crying for us, always making dua for us. Ummati, Ummati, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The least that we can do is to recognize those blessings and send salawat upon him. So in a sense, what we do on Friday is all shukr. Shukr to Rasulullah Sallallahu through salawat. Shukr to Allah Azza wa Jal. Through remembering him, dhikr of him, through coming together for the salah, through coming and feeding people and coming together and, and uh, being happy. Allah wants us to be happy. So, so Islam is a religion of celebration. Islam is a religion where shukur is the opposite of kufr. Islam is a religion of hamd, praise of Allah Azza wa Jal. We are the ummah. You know, we hear our, our Christian brothers always say, saying hallelujah, happiness, in happiness. Hallelujah means alhamdulillah. We are though the ummah whose Quran, whose book begins with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So we are the ummah of Hamd. We are the ones who should be always happy. Saying Alhamdulillah, the way you hear them say Hallelujah. Right? Our Fatiha al Kitab is called Surah Al Hamd. This great mother of the book that summarizes the entire book is called the Surah of Hamd. So our Quran is a book of Hamd, of praise of Allah and happiness for His blessings. And by the way, what is the difference between hamd and shukr? Hamd is to recognize Allah for all of his blessings and everything he is worthy of and to be happy with that and to praise him for it and to thank him for it. Shukr is more to thank him through action. Hamd is through recognition and shukr is through action. Because um, uh, in uh, in the Quran, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal addresses Sayyidina Dawood, "Amalu ala Dawood shukra." O house of David, express your thanks to Allah in action. Go do something to express your thankfulness to Allah Azza wa Jal. So, shukr is tied to action, and that's why people, when they are happy with one of the blessings of Allah, they go and express it in action. If Allah blesses you with wealth, Go and give some of it to thank Allah. Go give some of it to somebody. If Allah blesses you with health, pray in the night. Use that health and pray in the night for the sake of Allah. Allah blesses you with sight. Remember to use it in that which is good, with hearing. Re use it to, to listen to the Quran and to wise counsels and to follow it, etc. So, so shukr and hamd are very similar and you see throughout the Quran that hamd and shukr are so important. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his state, if you want to describe him, he described himself sallallahu alayhi wa as abdun shakur. That I, what I am, I'm a pure servant of Allah who is shakur. I am expressing shukur to Allah in everything that I do. I'm intensely grateful to Allah. I'm intensely aware of Allah Azza wa Jal's blessings upon me. Sayyidah Aisha said to him, the context of this is when Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, you have no reason that you need to keep praying throughout the night until your feet are swollen. Allah is happy with you. And he said, shall I not be a grateful servant? Afala akunu abdan shakura, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's saying, shall I not be a grateful? So that he's saying, I, this is his state. Of, of existence, to be a pure servant of Allah, worshipping Allah because he deserves to be worshipped, and being grateful to Allah. 
And shukur can, because we said shukur is like tawheed. In reality, you could say that the highest meaning of shukur is to worship Allah because he deserves to be worshipped. Because you th worship Allah because of his blessings upon you, but you also worship Allah because you realize that he, you recognize his lordship. Because shukur is the opposite of kufr. Kufr is to hide something, to cover it. So shukur is to show it, express it. So you express Allah's lordship, you recognize it through your shukur. So shukur can simply mean to worship Allah for his sake alone and to worship and to be aware of all his blessings upon you constantly and to be aware, aware constantly that he Azawajal, deserves to be worshipped. So he is telling us, he's telling us that his qiyam al-layl is for the sake of thanking Allah. And then he tells us, every time you wake up, you need to know that every single healthy joint in your body and every single healthy bone in your body, for that you owe thanks to Allah. And that he says, shall I not tell you something that if you do, will cover that gratefulness? It is that you pray two rak'ahs in the time of duha, between sunrise and dhuhr. And the ideal time, any time between those, but the ideal time is in the middle. Why? Because the whole purpose is we don't stay away too far from Allah. People found too big of a gap. We pray five times a day, but it wasn't enough. People who love Allah, they're like, there's too much of a gap between sunrise and dhuhr. So we're going to add duha. And then there's too much of a gap between Isha and Fajr. So let's do Qiyam al-Layl. Let's do Tahajjud. Let's do Witr in that time. Preferably in that time. So the best time of duha is in try, try to do it in the middle, but any time to thank Allah. For, so so Rasulullah is telling us, he's telling us Qiyam al-Layl. So Aisha is saying, why are you doing it? He says, shall, shall I not be a grateful servant? He says, thank Allah for his blessings upon you and your health by praying two rak'ah of duha. So he's telling us duha is also out of shukr. Then he tells us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you wake up, you say, alhamdulillah. You, uh, you say, alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana. Praise be to Allah who brought us back to life after the smaller death, which is sleep. He tells us every evening, he tells us if you read, Surat al uh, uh, Al-Hakum Al-Takathur Surat Al-Takathur You have thanked Allah Enough for that day Why? Because it ends with Al-Hakum Al-Takathur Hatta Zutum Al-Maqabir Kalla Sawfa Ta'alumun Ta'alumun Al-Amal Yaqeen Sorry? Thumma Al-Tas'aluna Yawma Ithin Anil Naim Then you will be asked On that day About your all the blessings of Allah. It just says you will be asked about your blessings. So it is saying, and Rasulullah is saying, if you recite that, you have thanked Allah for his blessings for that day. It's as if Rasulullah is saying, the very fact that you have reminded yourself that you need, that you owe, and you will be asked about Allah's blessings, that you reminded yourself that Allah has blessed you with something and you owe him thanks, you have thanked him. Yeah, and you're just recognizing Allah's blessings upon you. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi says, also, that in the evening, if you say a certain athkar, then you have thanked Allah enough for that day. For example, uh, asbahna, in the morning, asbahna wa asbah al-mulku lillah walhamdulillah. We woke up and we recognize that all the dominion is the dominion of Allah and praise be to Allah. And amsayna wa amsal mulku lillah walhamdulillah. It is evening and we recognize that dominion is all in the hands of Allah and praise be to Allah. And there is that dua in the hadith Amsay Allahumma ma amsa bina min ni'matin aw bi ahad min khalqik fa minka wahdak la sharika lak. O Allah, and in the morning as well. In the morning and evening you say, O Allah. All the blessings that, I, that happened to me this morning or to any of your creation, and like as you say in the evening, are from you alone, Ya Allah, no one else. And Rasulullah said, you say that, فَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ shukr. You say that, you have thanked Allah for all of his blessings. So again and again, Rasulullah is telling us, if you do th this, you have thanked Allah. If you do this, you have thanked Allah. If you do this, you have thanked Allah. Yani, he وسلم, is so taken by the idea that we need to be thanking Allah. For his blessings. 
again and again and again. And he's telling us, Qiyam al-Layl to thank Allah, and Salat al-Duha to thank Allah. When you wake up, you thank Allah. Before you go to sleep, when the sun sets, and you do dhikr and thank Allah. And shall, you know, so you see, you see what it means, Afala akunu abdan shakura, shall I not be a grateful servant? So you see, the, yani that this is his state. If you want to be like him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then be a happy servant, happy with the blessings of Allah, grateful for the presence of Allah. So, so our religion is a religion of celebration, of recognizing, looking at Allah's blessings in this world, recognizing all the good in this world, and being happy and celebrating it. And feeding people in a way of celebrating it. Like we see on Friday for celebrating humanity. So in other days, if we are happy with something, we feed people and celebrate as well. Like also with uh, the two Eids. So if people are happy about something, they feed. Rasulullah Sallallahu also, they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, why do you fast every Monday, uh, uh, every, um, Monday and Thursday? Or why do you fast every Monday, sorry, in the hadith in Sahih Muslim? Uh, and he, uh, the other one is in Tirmidhi, Monday and Thursday. In Sahih Muslim, why do you fast every Monday? And he, sallallahu alayhi wa said, it is the day in which I was born, and it is the day in which the Quran was revealed to me. Again, he, sallallahu alayhi wa again, thanking Allah. Thanking Allah for, that's the day, he's tying that day to that blessing of the Quran being descending upon him. And he's thanking Allah for the day that he was born. Again, so many ways, he وسلم, is trying to thank Allah. Yani it's amazing when you look at it all together. So how did he وسلم, want to thank Allah? Rasulullah وسلم, doesn't want to tell us, you know, he's too humble to say, come, let us all celebrate my birthday. So he says, it's between him and his Lord. He's saying, I'm going to fast. Because fasting is a type of worship that has no equal. A man came and said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, recommend for me an action. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fast for it is an act that has no equal. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all of, um, that Allah Azza wa Jal says, all the acts of, of, uh, of the son of Adam are, uh, how does it go? Um, for him, uh, except for fasting, which is for me, and I reward him for it. Some say that means, because all the actions of Allah will be rewarded by Allah. So what does that hadith mean? Some say it means nobody knows, nobody knows the reward of fasting except Allah. And he will, Azza wa Jal, will reveal that to us um, on the day uh, we, we meet him, Azza wa Jal. Some say, all the acts of the son of Adam are for him except for fasting. It is for me. It doesn't mean that it is done for me. It means that fasting is one of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is the one who does not eat and does not drink. And so we seek to draw near to Allah through one of his own attributes. But we know and recognize that we cannot do it forever. But we try to take on the attribute of not eating and drinking for as much as we can. And then we realize the hardship in that. After having purified ourselves and benefited from that, we break our fast. And so Rasulullah Sallallahu said, for the one who breaks his fast, are two, um, two joys. The joy of breaking his fast and the joy of meeting his Lord. So they say, and I reward it, means I am his reward. Meaning he fasted for my sake, and it's something hidden between me and him. He fasted by taking one of my attributes, I am his reward. Meeting me, gazing at my face is, the, is his reward. So either way, fasting is one of the greatest things possible. So Rasulullah is so aware of the blessings of Allah upon him. He, the blessing of the Quran, the blessing of his being born on Monday, that he said, I'm going to fast on that day for the sake of Allah. But... When it comes to other types of days, it, which are uh, like Salat al-Eid, Salat al-Fitr, uh, because Allah wants us to celebrate it together, He forbids us from fasting. So fasting is, the, is the greatest, one of the greatest acts through which we thank Allah, 
But Allah saying on my favorite days, on the day of Adha, which is the greatest day of the year, you know, as, as well as uh, Arafah, I want you to not fast. I want you to thank me through eating and drinking and enjoying and remembering me and thanking my blessings. So we see that, again, how gratefulness can be greater than hardship in the sight of Allah. So Rasulullah Sallallahu said in the hadith in Sunan Ibn Majah that الصائم الشاكر الطاعم الطاعم الشاكر كالصائم الصابر The one who eats and thanks Allah is like the one who fasts and is patient. And in another narration also in Ibn Majah في درجة أو كدرجة الصائم الصابر You eat and you are happy with Allah's blessings you are at the same rank and same degree as the one who is fasting and being patient. Imam al-Hakim al-Tirmidhi, he says, this is for the awam. This is for normal people. If they eat and they recognize Allah's blessing and thank him, it is equal to fasting and being patient. He says, but those who know Allah Azza wa Jal, when they want to eat a morsel of food, they pick up that morsel of food and they think of Allah's immense generosity and how Allah has brought that risk to him and how Allah has prepared everything in this universe and with his wisdom so that we can enjoy his blessings and they think of all of that and that nur of this recognition of being happy with the blessing of Allah not a thousand years of fasts can be equal to that so he says those who know Allah their shukr for the blessing of Allah when they're eating no amount of patience and fasting can equal it so he's saying gratefulness just being happy recognizing Allah's blessings is greater than the fasting patience why, why do we are we patient why do we go through fasting etc so that we may attain taqwa and recognize that everything comes to us from Allah Azza wa Jal so here we, we are being shown that if you have that gratefulness and thankfulness, then you have fulfilled what Allah wants from you. You recognize and are, have shukr of Allah's blessings upon you. And, you, um, you re, yani, and that is what Allah wants from us. Allah is happy with us to be happy with Him and to recognize that He is the source of all our blessings. And shirk is to say that someone else is a source of some of those blessings. Or to think that we... Anything that comes to us does not come from him. Or to forget about him. Or to not thank him for his blessings. So that, that's why Surah Ibrahim, if you look at it again, it is, like I said, it is um, a beautiful surah to reflect upon because you see that spirit of shukr everywhere. In this are signs for everyone who is patient and shakur, grateful, intensely grateful. And this is the surah in which uh, Allah reveals and Allah declares, your Lord declares, if you thank Allah, He will increase you. In shakartum la azidannakum, wala in kafartum in adabi la shadid. But if you have kufr, then my punishment is severe. Again, shukur and kufr are opposites again. Musa in takfuru fil ardi And Musa says to his people, if you and everyone on this earth rejects Allah, Allah does not need you. Allah does not need you, and He is in Himself Hamid. He is worthy of all praise by Himself, without anyone needing to praise Him or thank Him. So Allah wants us to be grateful servants and joyful servants for Him. So that shows you the virtue of shukr, and we saw that yesterday. We saw Sayyidina Bilal alayhi salam attaining that great rank, radiallahu uh, anhu attaining the great rank, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him, Ya Bilal, how did you attain that rank? That I see you, I go to paradise at night and I see you're also there. Your soul has gone to paradise. How did you achieve that spiritual rank? And he says, I felt that every time I do wudu, every time I do adhan, I owe Allah. Two rakas. So he got that through shukr. Through shukr of Allah. We saw that when that man, clever man, wanted to become 
special, like Abdullah ibn Rawaha is special, so he married his widow and said to her, teach me his ways. How did he become so special? And she said, every time he entered his house, he would do two rak'ahs of shukr. Yani two rak'ahs, which I would assume would be rak'ahs of shukr. We saw that with a man who, instead of saying, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, he shouted, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih. Expressing, he shouted out his love, his praise of Allah, his happiness with Allah, his blessings, recognizing that Allah deserves all praise. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, I saw these angels rushing and the gates of heaven opening and they went up to take that to the throne. How did these people attain all of that? Through shukr. So, yani, that state of shukr is something that is of the greatest essence of this deen and it should be, it is the deen in many ways. It is part of your tawheed. It is the spirit of this deen. Rasulullah sallallahu is a abdan shakura. I said, I am a great, shaku- a intensely grateful servant. So if you want to follow him sallallahu alayhi wa you are an intensely grateful servant. You are a happy servant. Allah wants us to be happy. Allah wants us to celebrate our accomplishments through eating and drinking and being with people and Friday, etc. So Allah wants us to be happy. And so I, again, uh, also if you have any reason to want to commemorate something, and to thank Allah for something and feed people or bring people together, there is nothing wrong with that. So people tell you there's only two Eids in Islam, now tell them no, that is the Sharia meaning of Eid. But every Friday is a Eid, in the words of Rasulullah himself. And every day, as Imam Ali bin Abi Talib said, that I'm a pious man and I feel that Allah has accepted my actions is a Eid. So every time I want to thank Allah for something is Eid. If you want to remind a child of his birthday every day so that he thanks Allah, that is Eid. Rasulullah thanked Allah for being born on Monday every week, not every year, every week. And Rasulullah in his Hajjat al Wada sacrificed as many animals as the years of his life. He sacrificed as many animals as the years of his life to thank Allah for every year of his life. So so this is a religion, the spirit should be a happy spirit. We begin our Qur'an with Alhamdulillah. It is our Surah Al-Fatiha is a Surah Alhamd. This is the Qur'an of Hamd, of praise, of bringing us to a state of praise. So we should be the ones singing the praise of Allah, saying Hallelujah, Alhamdulillah. So, um, so that is why shukr is so important. And that is why... Um, Ibn Abbas عنه, said, as I said in the quote, if you have those four things, qualities, then you are a successful one. Sidq, and haya, and beautiful character, and shukr. Um, okay, we've done about an hour. I'm thinking to stop here and do sidq next time. That way we can give it its due, inshallah, and because so that Sheikh Abdul Hakim would have come to the, to the section on Sidq so that we are parallel and we don't go ahead of him. Because um, I don't want to do what he does, but I want to supplement it, inshallah. So uh, inshallah, I'll, I'll leave Sidq until tomorrow. And uh, I apologize for only doing about an hour today and seek your forgiveness. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs>